Menos tu sueño. Uh-huh. How old how is Prime again? Okay. Right underneath it, and they do. You can see that the the platform is not 
up high enough to pass the piston so they can sit the platform on top of it. So that's what they do with the shuttle. Um, same thing, they take the, sh the platform with the shuttle from the building and they take it all the way out to the launch pad and that's how they will then lower the platform with shuttle on top of other six pedestals. Now you can see the doors wide open. That's platform number three. Platform number two is still behind the doors here. Look at the, 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 the tracks down on the ground, the track marks down on the ground. This is the crawlerway, folks. It was specially built for the crawler. Seven feet deep. Different layers of compact fuel, um, hydraulic fuel, limestone, and the top layer is Alabama River um, tenant. Bottom River rocks from the Tennessee River out of the state of Alabama. Right. Don't say it right the first time. You will not get it right. Now look how wide it is. We're going right across the crawlerway. Now you realize that the grass is a medium, right? Four tracks on one side, four tracks on the other side. The smaller building next to the VAT is called the Launch Control Center. And from, le from landing to launch, everything is monitored here. So this is where they take monitor all the shuttle orbiters from here all the way up to lift off. Wow, that was a big bonus. See the crawler moving? All right, okay. I'm going to ask Bob to play video four so we can see what they do inside the building. Please look at your monitors, please, folks. Three and a half miles. You saw how slow the crawler moves, right? So it takes between five and seven hours to get the shuttle from the building out to the launch pad. That's right, that's in a good day. <laughs> On a bad day, it can take a lot longer than that. But um, here to your left, you see launch pad 39A, and then to the far left, there's launch pad 39B, and those are both used for the shuttles. They alternate pads on every launch. For the Apollo missions, from Apollo 8 to Apollo 17, they were all um, launched from here except Apollo 10. Apollo 10 was launched from pad B um, to test the facilities there since it was um, built a little after pad A was ready. Now notice the incline to the top of the pad. There's a 5% incline for a 45 feet deep flame trench. And that's where we see all the um, exhaust from the booster and the three main engines going into the pad. The tower is 347 feet tall. Now uh, that is a fixed tower. For the shuttle, they had to modify the things here from the Apollo to the shuttle program. So the shuttle pad got, um, got a fixed tower, tall one, and a rotating tower that rotates around the shuttle to provide access to the um, to the cargo bay and also to protect the outside of that shuttle since those tiles are so delicate. But looking quickly on your book on pages five and six, you can kind of compare how it looked back in the 60s during the Apollo launches and with the shuttles now a day. Um, inside that rotating structure there's also what they call the payload change out room. Runway is actually 17,000 feet long. That includes a thousand foot rollover on each end. It's 300 feet wide. That's 16 inches of reinforced concrete out there. Now the reason you can't see across the runway is uh, it's actually crowned. There's, it's a 24-inch drop from the center to each edge for runoff. And you can't see either end of the runway because it is laid to the curvature of the earth. The placards that you see running up down the sides of the runway are, are a thousand foot markers. Allows that commander to know how many thousand feet of runway he has left. Now that's never really been a problem here. They touch down at approximately the same point on the runway, we stopped using about two thirds of the runway uh, on each landing. They come in uh, on a very steep angle, about 20 degrees down is what they're coming in at. Uh, if you come in on a 747 or at Orlando, you come in at about three degrees and at about 125 miles an hour. And if your pilot didn't like what he's seen at the runway, he could pull back on the stick, go up, come back around, try again. They don't have that option here. 